Yes. Good morning, everyone. I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, right, let's just begin this time with a word of prayer. So maybe one of us can lead in prayer. Tafina, Joan, anyone can. Yeah. yeah, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we come before you. We pray that you would speak to us from your word. Through your man, Lord, we pray that you would enrich our hearts with your voice and we would be able to apply this in our lives, God. We thank you for this time. We pray for all our um, classmates that they'll be able to join soon. Let your grace be upon us, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, John. All right. So we've been talking about right workplace attitudes. Uh, last week, we covered quite a, quite a few points. We looked at uh, how our attitude almost always determines our altitude. So uh, we need to keep, keep a check on our attitude, uh, doing all for the glory of God, uh, being kingdom focused with a kingdom mindset in everything that we do. Uh, and important point was, uh, you know, always remember there's more to life than just making money. So money is not everything, uh, building relationships, this sense of uh, accomplishment or uh, a sense of uh, you know value in the organization that's again is very important walking in the fear of the lord uh, and even as we do that uh, you know being obedient being sincere being willing uh, um, and being cheerful and again faithful loyalty all these um, aspects are very very important for us uh, at the workplace now we also talked about how there can be office politics, gossips, and uh, you know uh, unfair methods used in the organization, uh, but that should not stop us from walking with these right workplace attitudes, right? When we look at the example of how you know Daniel and Joseph, Daniel served under three uh, uh, empires, but in all three empires, he was the leader, right? Uh, the governor and uh, uh, and he had a good name. Right? It was not like everything was for him. Uh, people were trying to bring him down, but because he had a spirit of excellence, people recognized it. Uh, and people saw that, and uh, you know he was greatly used. So uh, our heart, our attitude towards things are very important. So we stopped there. Um, and we also looked at accountability, uh, being accountable to our leaders. Uh, and the people, uh, again, are, we are first accountable to God, and God has placed leaders uh, under us uh, or above us. So we are to be uh, accountable to our leaders as well. Right. So let's pick up from there. Uh, we are at the point, be passionate. Uh, so chapter three, the point, be passionate. If your heart is not in it, get in or get out. Uh, let's read. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 8. Here's what it says. Bad work gets paid with a bad check. Good work gets solid pay. Uh, now, even as I just keep explaining these points, feel free, as usual, you can stop me, ask questions, or post your questions as well. Now, over time, uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, I got this wonderful opportunity to talk and we talk to people, we meet with a lot of people. Over time, it's very easy to, to tell whether a person is doing something out of, you know, uh, just because it's a job or just because they, if their heart is, or whether they're passionate or their heart is in it. Right now, most likely if a person is passionate about it, he can do it for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Right? Because that, that it's a passion, it's a zeal that he wants to do, he or she wants to do. But if you're being forced to do something over time, and it's not going to last for long, I would say maybe one and a half, maybe two years, uh, it's, you know, you, you can tell, right? Uh, but the Bible exhorts us to be passionate about our work, right? to always give our best, to always go the extra mile. Right now, here's what uh, is very important. Right now, if we are not passionate about something, first thing is get passionate about it. Right, 
Now it could be something very simple, right? Uh, like for me, I was I was never passionate about reading. I said, oh man, uh, from as a child, I was more of an outdoor person, right? I remember as a kid, always going out, cycling, playing football, playing cricket. Uh, books was only okay. Exams are coming. Okay, let's just study. Uh, and my parents, you know, they they were not like you know you have to get ninety. Only then, uh, you know, they were like okay, whatever you score, it's all right. You know, they didn't really force us. So growing up, I was never into reading. We never had books around us, you know, these to read and all that. But but after I became a believer, uh, I realized that hey, if I need to be teaching, preaching the word of God. Uh, yes, I firstly I need to read the Bible. I need to read it. Right? Uh, I can't say keep listening to sermons and uh, you know depend on that. I need to get into the Word. I have to read. And two, I can't just say okay, I've read the Word and be happy. There are you know, plenty of resources available, plenty of wonderful authors, wonderful books that are there. Uh, and I knew I had to gain knowledge by reading all of this. Um, the problem was I was not a reader. But I, I'm not a reader. I, it, it's just not in me. Uh, but I realized that if this is the calling, I have to do this. So I pushed myself to be passionate about it. Now, initially, it was very difficult. I would read two, three pages, fall asleep. Uh, but then I realized, OK, I have to push. I have to learn. I have to do it. Right? So get in 100% or get out. Meaning, don't stand on the fence. Don't sit on the fence. Don't say, okay, you know, I, I'll try to do this, I'll try to do that. No, you've got to be in fully, or you know, nobody likes a half hearted job, right? Uh, I'm sure you heard the same, right? Hey, this was a half hearted, uh, uh, you know, uh, effort that you have put in, or, uh, you know. So the reason is lack of enthusiasm will cause lack of passion and zeal. and Right, we will not do our best. Now, at times, you may be passionate about the job, but the environment that you're working in can get you down. Like your boss may say, you know, you haven't done this, or or your colleagues in this office politics, and all of these things happening. Right, uh, stick to the stick to what you're passionate about. Meaning, clear if you can clear the problem, try to go up. Uh, and you know, just uh, try to resolve the problem that you're facing. Uh, then go ahead and do that, um, um, uh, and and work with passion. Right? Uh, whatever it is, I mean, you, you may be a housewife, you know, just at home. You may be a student, right? Uh, a student uh, in going to college, uh, or even here in Bible College. Be passionate about it. I right, uh, say, okay, God, I thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know, today I'm going to learn something. Uh, today I want to do this in the right way. Uh, just maintaining that passion. Next one is maintain integrity and truthfulness always and in all things. Proverbs 10 9 is what it says He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. Right? Now, what is integrity? Integrity is doing what is right, that is morally, ethically, and legally. Right? And, and I'm sure we've, you know, we've used these words many a times. Right? Hey, uh, integrity. And at APC, this is something that we, you know, we stress on. Uh, displaying integrity in everything that we do. It may even be starting sessions on time. Time. Because if you value time, it's, it's part of integrity, right? Um, it can be about how we treat our volunteers, how we treat our, uh, you know, co-workers, uh, how we treat our congregation, and how do we, uh, you know, there will there'll be people of different spiritual maturity, uh, uh, different spiritual levels, and how do we treat each one of them? Now, when you look at it in, uh, in an organized, like in the workplace, uh, are we taking the right kind of breaks, the right timings. Are we doing the right things? Are we, uh, you know, following the rules in what we are doing? Right? Because here's the thing: great leaders have fallen, and large organizations have just, you know, 
crumble down because of lack of integrity. There are plenty of organizations that we can talk about uh, also, right? I'm talking about in the, in the secular world. A lot of organizations started well, they've gone in, into being a multi million dollar organization, but they've just crumpled down because there was a lack of integrity. And what about in ministry? Plenty. And there are plenty of uh, you know, leaders who have fallen. Why? Because lack of integrity. Now, it may not, in ministry or even in the workplace, it, that integrity may not be just money or, uh, or uh, you know, relationships. Uh, it, it could be legal matters as well. Right? Legally, we've not done the right things, not followed the right process, right? And it's just, you know, uh, fallen down. Let's look at this. Look at a few things about integrity, a few verses here. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put and put perverse lips far from you. Proverbs 4.24. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. Proverbs 12.22. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who are truthful are his delight. Okay, all of these from Proverbs. Look at Proverbs 11.3. The integrity of the upright will guide them, but the perversity of the unfaithful will destroy them. Proverbs 11.5, the righteousness of the blameless will direct his way right, but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness. Then again, one more last verse, Proverbs 28.20, honest people will lead a full, happy life. But if you are in a hurry to get rich, you're going to be punished. And so you look at all these verses, it talks about integrity, talks about doing things right, morally, ethically, legally. And in a world that we are in right now, we can do so much illegally. We can, you know, now, nowadays the moral standards of the world has gone really blue. Um, I would say it's, it's nowhere close to, you know, because the biblical standards are very high. And now you look at the standards that are happening around us, it's very low, and it's e easy for us, uh, whether in the workplace or ministry, to fall into that trap. Hey, everyone are doing it, so why not I? Everyone are following this set of rules, so how, even if I follow these set of rules, I think I should be fine. No. Uh, always look at God's word as your, as the standard of everything that we do. And we, from these words, that we just read, and there are plenty of verses in Proverbs. Uh, Isaiah talks a little bit about it. Jeremiah talks about it. Uh, uh, and the reason they they talk about it is because they were in captivity during that time. And this this about where he's connecting them. He's talking about the Israelites where they were unfaithful, uh, they were not truthful to God, and that's why they are in captivity and all of that. But what we want to understand is in a world that we are in now. With all the new things, new uh, you know technologies and all of these things, it's very easy to be morally uh, you know uh, wrong. Uh, but these verses help us to uh, you know to know that hey, in terms of integrity, God is very serious about it. Right? Being integrity, uh, being true to the organization you're working in, to the leaders, to your coworkers, to your family, right? To everything. Next point: Work hard. There is no substitute for diligence. No place for laziness. In this Proverbs ten four, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. What is diligence? Uh, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of diligence is you know that. Uh, the ant is so diligent. They just right. I, I love that verse. Right in Proverbs, I think it says, "You know, look at the ant. It's like that. They don't uh, waste their time. They don't, you know." But look at that. Ants are so diligent in what they do. Right? Diligence means thoroughness, meticulousness, carefulness, and attentiveness. 
I don't know if you've any of you have seen how bees make a hive. It is a process of diligence. Right? It is thoroughness, it is very meticulous, it is attentiveness. Right? Uh, uh, you know, I remember uh, you know, where I stay of uh, you know another apartment which had a balcony. I saw a small black thing. Right? Many. This happened a long time back. And over time, I, I saw that, it, I knew it was going to become a beehive. And it, that, that ball became a little bigger, and it became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it just became so huge. But you can, you can picture those hundreds of bees just holding on to each other, gripped on each other meticulously. Right? Uh, what happens if some of them say, hey, I'm going to let go? Uh, or the other ones, uh, you know, the inner ones say, I'm going to let go. Everything, you know, I don't know if it's going to fall off, but it may not, it, they may not be able to fulfill the task that they came together for. Laziness, it goes halfway, right? It does not complete the job. Laziness is also procrastination, delaying things, right? Now, of course, there are times we will have to, uh, do things and we may have to postpone things but procrastination simply means if there's something that you can do now uh, but you just don't want to do it there's no reason so you just move it to another day that is called laziness right uh, and look at this verse Proverbs 6 9 through 11 right how long is the lazy man going to lie around when, when is he ever going to get up? A short nap, he says. I'll fold my hands and rest away. Poverty will attack him like an armed robber. Right? Always remember, laziness opts for what is the easiest. What's the most convenient? What's the most comfortable? What is it uh, you know, where I don't have to do any physical labor or people don't want to put in the extra effort? Whatever is convenient. And the verse that we read says laziness attracts poverty. And when you look at poverty, not only talking about money, but also um, uh, you know, poverty could be you know lack of growth, just being in the same place, right? Uh, no, no growth in life, no growth in work and ministry or personal life, nothing. It's just stacked up, it's there. And many, many young people that I have met, uh, and this normally happens when young people say, I want to join ministry. Uh, when they say, hey, uh, I want to join ministry, so they quit a job, and uh, you know, probably one week or one month, they're praying, fervently praying the whole day, just praying, praying. Now, it's good, but after a month, that passion or that zeal slowly dies down. Then from 10 hours of praying, it becomes 8 hours. Then the next month, it becomes 5 hours. Then it becomes 4 hours. Then it becomes 1 hour. Then we start justifying. Anyways, I prayed, you know, well, when I started off, I prayed 10 hours, so that those prayers still hold for me. No. Uh, many a times I've told people, you know, um, especially parents, they come and they share, they say, you know, my son or my daughter's saying he wants to do this or wants to do that. The first thing I say is tell them to go work. And work, put your hands to the plow. You gotta get your hands hard and you gotta work. You gotta put your hands to the plow. Right? Now there will be times when God will just make things easy, like transitions. So for example, you're working in a place, you may just transition very smoothly, or you're working and God wants you to come into full-time ministry. The transition may be very smooth. You don't have to do much of a hard work, but that's very rare because when God is calling somebody, he makes sure that person is not a lazy person because God cannot use lazy people. But he cannot, he cannot use lazy people. So these are things that got into my head at a very, very early age, and I, and I thank God for it. Uh, you know, some of the things, uh, not to, you know, just to encourage each one of us. And there were times I would push myself. Okay, I want to do it. How it gets done, 
uh, you know, I just need to do it. It, was, it, it may involve, you know, physical work, involve, uh, you know, just uh, lack of, you know, this uh, sacrificing on sleep, sacrificing on friends, uh, or sacrificing, you know, going out to places, uh, just for the sake of, you know, just growing uh, in the things of God. So I want to encourage each one of you, right? Uh, uh, you may be already serving in the church, or you're planning to serve in the church, you plan to start your ministry, you're already in ministry, you're in the workplace. Hard work is something that God will always reward. Right? He will reward it over time. You know, never feel that hey, nobody's nobody knows how hard I worked. But nobody's appreciating me for the hard work. It's all right. Continue strong. Your father in heaven sees you in private. He knows what's going on in your life. He knows whether you're doing things, uh, if, you, if you have been faithful, if you have worked hard. I remember when I joined uh, as staff in APC many, many years back. One of my main roles was uh, I joined as a life group coordinator, so I do the life group. But then the remaining hours, I was asked to go out on outreaches. Right, so my so about four or five hours, I would be out giving out tracks, inviting people to church, and we have those tracks: love deeper than love itself, what can wash away our sins. So I remember we would always carry those, always carry them in my backpack. And go all across the city, uh, just giving out these invites, inviting people to church, inviting people to our meetings and conference. Uh, many times I felt, hey, well, I, I can just go home and sit. Uh, but I thank God for his, you know, for his, for the way he has led. Uh, you know, thank God that, you know, for faithfulness. Thank God for hard work. Um, so I, I, when I look back, uh, it, was it good? Was it hard work? Was it difficult standing on the roads, giving her tracks? Yeah, it was very difficult, but I enjoyed it. Uh, so that is why we must be also passionate. When you're passionate about it, it's not going to look like a job that you have to do. Right? And it could be anything, right? I'm just talking in terms of ministry, but in the workplace also. Um, laziness attracts poverty. If you feel that you're, you know, in that place, I, I, I need to do something, get up, get up, push yourself, go ahead, you know, be wise. When I say push yourself, you know, do, but be wise and, and, and don't let laziness creep in. And get up, do the things what God has called you to do, right? Don't just be busy, be productive. Because even God wants that, right? Let's look at this verse, John 15, 1 and 2. I am the real vine, and the Father is the gardener. He breaks off every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and he prunes every branch that does not does bear fruit, so that it will be clean and bear more fruit. Verse 8, my Father's glory is shown by your bearing much fruit, and in this way you become my disciples. Now, it's not, you know, this verse is so wonderful, right? I'm the vine, you are the branches. Jesus didn't end at that. If, if even though I am attached to Jesus, even though Jesus is the vine, I'm the branches, but he, Jesus is saying, bear fruit, right? Now, if we don't bear fruit, he's going to cut it off. This is not bearing fruit. There's no point of that branch being attached to me when it's not bearing fruit, right? If we are being productive, right, what he does is he, he wants us to increase our productivity. What we do at work is important to God as what we do in church or in the prayer closet because everything we do, we do it for Him. So sometimes, you know, we try to be busy with the work that we have. Right? Uh, now, it's not about just being busy, it's about being productive. Right? So, for example, um, you know, uh, Sorry, I'm getting only examples of uh, ministry, but uh, let me try and give you a, 
uh, example from the workplace. So just picture this, right? Somebody, a young man, he's worked in the corporate sector and now God has called him. He's clearly heard from God to start his own business. So he moves out, he's planned, he's prepared everything, he's financially ready. And so he's done everything, he starts the business, right? Now he starts the business and the, and the first year, things are going okay, but he's very busy. Right, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to do this. And there's so many things to do, yes. But after five years, you know, maybe for example, he started off with five employees. Now after five years, if he has five employees doing the same thing, then he's just been busy. Uh, there, there's no, there's no um, you know, productivity. I hope this example makes sense, right? So what I'm trying to get at is there should be growth as we grow in our business, as we grow in our workplace and in the ministry and everything. There must be growth. But if you look at it in ministry, uh, you know, if, if you are in charge of any, you know, maybe cell groups, if you're in charge of cell groups, right, um, you start off with two people or three people in your cell group, now, three years down the line, if your cell group is still two people and you've been busy, but there's no, uh, you know, there's no growth, right? So what we, what we want to see is productivity and productivity will bring results, get things done. You know, in the corporate sector, they say the numbers talk. You can, we can give a lot of explanation. Uh, this, 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 you know, I did this, I did this, I did this. And then after that, I did, you know, at home, and I didn't stop at that. I began to work from home. But then the boss says, but you did all of that. You know, but the numbers are still the same. Whether you work eight hours here or whether you work, uh, uh, you know, uh, 12 hours at home, the numbers are the same. And, and people are going to look at the results. It shall be known by a fruit. The verse 8 says, my father's glory is shown by your bearing fruit. So only if I bear fruit is when, you know, I can see productivity, right? So very important when we are, you know, working in ministry, make sure there's productivity, there's growth. It could be even in the volunteer teams uh, in church. If you're in charge of one of the, the volunteer teams, don't be satisfied with 10 people. Okay, come on, I need to increase this i need to uh you know build this team i need to make them stronger i need to make it more effective i need to make it in a way that you know everyone can you know uh, be productive or start their own teams within the church so just looking at you know growth what do you do with your time is up to you don't waste it i always uh, you know this saying always caught my attention Time flies, but you're the pilot. It really struck gold for me. Time flies. You know, we use this song. Hey, how old are your kids? Oh, oh man, time flies. It's true. Time really goes fast. You know, look at 2022. It, uh, you know, to me, it went really fast. Years are over. And January is over of 23. You got 11 months left. 11 months is going to go really quick. Time flies, but you are the pilot, meaning you must know how, you and I must know how to use this time. Proverbs 28, 8, 19, a hardworking farmer has plenty to eat. People who waste time will be poor, plain and simple. People who waste time will be poor. Now, I'm not talking only about financially, but in everything, in skills, we need to improve our skills. We need to improve our time management. We need to improve our efficiency, our productivity. Um, so we have to use time wisely, right? Discard unnecessary uh, tasks. And sometimes, you know, of course, now in a world that we're living in, uh, media and technology is just it's just going. It's it, it, so everything is there on the phone. Right, so, but there's, there's pros, there's cons, right? So, 
we can end up being on Facebook. Just say, hey, let me just see what's on Facebook. And we open Facebook. And okay, it's five minutes, let me see. And then suddenly you realize it's been one and a half hours or two hours. What was I doing? Just looking at everyone's, these are my old friends, looking at their pictures or I mean, nothing wrong in it. Uh, but is it productive? Right? And now with Instagram, you know, people are just, uh, I don't have a Facebook. I, I don't I don't know if I have one or I don't have Instagram. But these are good, right? If you have it, good. It's, I'm not saying don't. Uh, but I just prefer not to have because it's a waste of time uh, for me, right? Uh, uh, I don't want to waste my time. Even YouTube, you know, I, I always make sure that I, uh, I I don't spend too much time on it. Uh, the maximum I would do is listen to one sermon. Uh, I would choose a sermon which is 40, 45 minutes, not more than that. Listen to it, make pointers, and build on that, right? So, so there are things that can take our time. It can just eat up our time. Right. Sometimes it could be just those lunch breaks, right? Uh, going out, all of us, more than going with friends and you know, colleagues and going to the world. lunch break and we begin to order the food. It comes in, we have one hour break. By the time we get the food, we talk, we talk, we talk, we eat. Okay, where is this from? Where is that from? And then it becomes two hours. And we realize, hey, I've taken a two hour lunch break. And the reason I'm sharing this is because when I was in the workplace, it happened to me. And God corrected me. He said, you wasted about an hour just doing nothing. Uh, now, it's not like every time the Lord reminds me, but I just knew that it was not right what I did. I should discard, discard unnecessary tasks when you feel it's not required. Don't, don't, don't spend time, too much time on it, right? And uh, this is something I'm also you know, trying to teach my children, where I you know, sometimes they say, can I use the phone? I want to play, I want to watch this game, or I want to see, I want to watch this video. Uh, now, whether it's Christian or whether it's not Christian, I always tell them, okay, 15 minutes, right? Not more than that. So I put a timer, right, 15 minutes. So once the timer, the timer beeps, so they know, okay, it's time to give the phone. Um, I, I, I don't, I try not to give them that, uh, you know, extra time because I know that they can do something better with that time, right? And as adults, we must learn how to, you know, manage our time. Have a passion for excellence even as you work, right? Uh, Proverbs 22, 29, observe people who are good at their work. Skilled workers are always in the bond and admired. They don't take a back seat to anyone. So develop a passion for excellence in your work. And excellence takes skill and hard work. Now, we must remember as, as God's children, everyone, not only those, as human beings, we have talents that God gives us, gifts and talents he places in us. Right? Singing is a God-given gift. Right? So if you can hold a note, you can sing in tune. It's a God-given gift. It's a gift that's in you. Now, if you want to become, if you feel, okay, I can sing, so I want to become a singer when I grow. You know, I, I want to also sing professionally um, and maybe in the worship team or just be a professional singer and glorify God in my occupation. Now, if I know that, now I can't say, okay, I can sing. I have to improve my skills. I need to learn. Okay, there are different things and different, uh, you know, attributes in singing. There's, there's sopranos, there's alto, there's tenor, there's melody, uh, there's singing melodies, there's singing parts, uh, uh, there's uh, you know, uh, voice alter alternations and all kinds of things that are there. Um, well, and so I need to, you know, develop that. If I'm passionate about it. I can pursue it. Right. The same thing with instruments. Right? Uh, I don't think there's any instrument who said I learned everything. Any any musician who said I learned everything. I always pursue it because you're passionate about it. Right? Same thing with work. Um, you know, whatever your work is, uh, pursue excellence. Right? Uh, you may say, Pastor, but my work is just moving one file. You know, uh, I need to just forward files uh, from one, one, one account to another, or I just need to email this. Yeah. Plus, you do it in excellence. Right? Uh, 
uh, over time, people will recognize it. Right? There is a joy in completing a task well, knowing that you have given your best. Like really, there's a joy in that. But you know, you've done your best, and you know you're leaving the results up to God. That's such a joy there, right? Work in excellence, uh, and when you do that, people will want to be part of your team. People will recognize you. People will appreciate your work. You will be admired, and eventually, those promotions. God will raise you. God is the one who gives you promotion. It is, you know, God will speak to your leaders to give you the promotion. God spoke to those three kings of those three empires. All of them were unbelievers. And they didn't believe in uh, the God of Israel. God spoke to them and said, let Daniel be there. Right? Let Daniel be the leader. And look at uh, Joseph. God, God told, you know, in that one instance, God would have said, you know, Maybe Pharaoh didn't know, but it was God who said, okay, since you've come up, you've told me the dream, you've come up with a solution for the dream, seven years of famine, seven years of uh, abundance. So there's no one better who can handle this whole situation. Joshua, your second in command in Egypt. Sorry, Joseph, your second in command in Egypt. From nowhere. Right. When when we do things the right, when we're passionate about it, God will give us the promotion. Never stop learning. Wise man will Proverbs one five. Wise man will hear and increase learning, and man of understanding will attain wise counsel. When you and I get a job or get into ministry, whatever we're doing. Your learning happens on the job every day, and then your learning continues to grow, right? You, you acquire new skills, you listen to people, you watch people, read, go through trainings that are available, right? And you know, right now I'm, I'm watching this series of videos where it talks about uh, you know, how to do, uh, how to improve your you know, uh, speaking skills in front of, uh, you know, stage speaking skills. And uh, there's nothing biblical about it, right? There's no, uh, it's not about Christianity, nothing. It's just skilled people who have, you know, uh, who, have, who are excellent in this. And I feel that, you know, by, learning, by watching them, I will learn, right? I'll learn something and apply it because I know that this is something that I have to do. Every Sunday, going forward, preaching. So I have to improve my vocabulary, sentence construction. Uh, you know, uh, there are so, you know, so many things that this person was saying, and I, I never really thought about it. He said, "Make sure you, you know, you dress up. You're comfortable with the dress that you wear, the clothes that you wear. You're comfortable and you're confident. Because when you're comfortable and, uh, and confident in the clothes that you wear." Uh, it'll show on the stage when you're teaching. Uh, make sure that you're, uh, you know, you can also practice hand movements. Now, for me, it's just a habit. You know, hand movements, it, it, it's a habit. But, but I was surprised, you know, they, there are certain ways of hand movements uh, that, you know, apparently they have, uh, they communicate certain things, hand movements. These are things that I didn't know. Right? And so these are things I'm learning. And, um, eye contact uh, with with the uh, with the people who are sitting uh, with the audience, um, and how those eye contacts should be done. Uh, so there's so many things, uh, the talking skills, and um, you know how to uh, you know those those, uh, the, the, the rate of speech and so many things. Never stop learning. You know people who are better than you. We must not say, "Oh man, uh, you know he's better than me." What is this? Or you know, we go there, we learn from that person, so that we can, you know, uh, improve ourselves, right? So ask a lot of questions. Listen attentively. Asking questions is wonderful. You know, one of the things we we had a mentoring hour, and when we were in Bible college, we didn't have these things of mentoring hour. I remember. You know, 
and I mean, I would call it when I was there. Oh man, I would I would write down questions because I didn't want to disturb the class. So I'll write down about twenty or questions each week. They would be the most silly questions. I and sometimes it'd be like, why am I even writing this question? But I would I would write them out. Or twenty or at least twenty questions each week. I would talk to all our leaders, all our teachers, and the pastoral team. I would ask them those questions. Tell me about this. Tell me about this. And thank God for our wonderful team. They patiently uh, answered. And, uh, but it helped us. It helped me personally, right? Um, and I still write a lot of questions. I still mean to that. I still ask questions. It's not like just because we are, you know, it's 10 years now, 10, 12 years down. That doesn't mean I don't have questions. I still have questions. I still ask. Uh, learn. Experiment. Be quick to learn from mistakes. Watch others. Learn from what others are doing. Right? Don't just be somebody who's like, okay, I'm doing what I'm doing. Whether they like it or not, it's okay. I'm just doing it. No. We want to, we want to, you know, uh, improve. We want to never stop learning. I, I just keep growing in everything, and and there is so much available to learn from. Right? Um, uh, if you if you go into Google and you type in uh, David Guzik, and this this is just an example because uh, I keep doing this, David Guzik, and you have these commentaries. And he's done a commentary on the entire Bible. And then after that, there are so many people who give such wonderful explanations on the Bible. And, and uh, now we have you know, all these uh, websites that are there, sermoncentralpreacher.com, and they give you these wonderful topics and how to you know, make a sermon outline. Did I learn it in Bible college? Yes. But there are homiletics. Uh, is it something that I have to learn now? Yes. We never stop learning. Okay. Last point and we'll close. Stay calm, stay focused when the unexpected happens. No need, verse, sorry, Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. No need to panic over alarms or surprises or predictions that doom stays uh, just around the corner because God will be right there with you. He'll keep you safe and sound. Now, the alarms, the surprises, the bad news can come anytime, anywhere, and in every situation, we must remember that God is with us. And he will see us through this moment. Right? Uh, and, and it's very alarming, you know, especially when suddenly a company may say, uh, we are laying off a thousand employees. It's alarming, uh, unexpected. And you're just doing your work, you're excited about what you're going to do, you like your job, you like everything about it. Uh, but this news comes on. It's 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 a it's a news that shakes you, right? Stay calm. Right? Stay calm. Anchor yourself in God in the face of bad news. Now we all will face bad news, right? Uh, maybe family, uh, uh, workplace, you know, personal lives. Uh, we may face bad news. Oh, we may go through the unexpected, right? Uh, that's where your your relationship with God uh, will come in handy. You know, you, you anchor yourself in God. You anchor yourself in God's word. God, these are the problems. These are the situations. The unexpected has come. But I know, Lord, that you are there with me. And I trust your word. I trust your promises. I trust that I'm not going to be alone during this season. And the Lord will see us through. Stay calm. Stay positive. Stay God-focused. I'll close with this verse. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Uh, Jeremiah is talking in a time when um, the uh, Syria, Assyrians have already come and destroyed Jerusalem. So here's what he says. Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, that spread out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes. But its leaf will be green, and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. What an encouragement Jeremiah is giving. 
Jeremiah was giving this encouragement during a time uh, where Israel was falling. It's almost it's on the verge of falling, and he's saying the encouragement is Israel. You shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You shall bear fruit. Imagine I can just picture the people saying, "What are you talking about, Jeremiah? Don't you see what's happening around?" Don't you see that we are going to be destroyed by the Assyrians and we are, uh, we hold no chance. We, we, we're, going to be, we're going to be wiped out. But here's the rest, here's what Jeremiah is saying. You shall be like a tree. Even when the drought comes, uh, you will be fruitful. So you and I, in those seasons or those times when the unexpected come, anchor yourself in God's presence, in God's word. Stay positive, stay calm. It's very easy to get angry, get upset. Uh, you know, but these are things that we can do. This assurance that God is always with us. Amen. So wonderful. Right. Any questions before we close? Uh, any thoughts? Any if you have any questions? We've completed this chapter. So we'll go to section two next week. We're going to talk about corporate vision uh, and what it's all about. Yes, any questions? Are everybody able to track along? Please let me know if I'm too fast or uh, is it okay? It's okay. 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 All right, thank you. Only John responded. Anyways, uh, it's good. Uh, let's, let's just begin to apply these things in our life, in our work, uh, our studies, everything that we're doing, <clears throat> families. Um, we trust God will continue to use us, right? Right. Let's pray and close. Maybe one of us can pray. Any one of us? Isaac, Jafina, anybody can. Close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class that we had. God, we thank you for everything that we learned through Pastor Paul today. God, we pray that you build us in such a way that we can glorify you wherever we go, Lord, and we can preach your gospel wherever we go wherever we work like in every single place we will declare that jesus is god there's a living god who loves these people help us to have that boldness that courage help us to stay committed towards the uh, commission that you have given us lord be with us and guide us as we learn uh, many new things through this class help us to put it into action lord help us to um, not just have faith but put our faith in action so that our faith will be completed. Help us to, uh, whether we eat or drink, help us to do everything for your glory. Be with us and guide us. We thank you for Pastor Paul. We bless him. We bless his family. We pray that you keep him in good health. And all my classmates who all are listening, we thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jafina. Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a wonderful week ahead. I'll see you on Monday. God bless.